there are two things that a leader can influence when it comes to getting results. There's the strategy or the plan, and then there's the ability to execute that strategy. And if you ask leaders which of these two things they struggle with more, the vast majority of leaders are going to tell you it's execution. Now, if you've been to business school or you have an MBA, ask yourself this question. What was it you were studying? Were you studying execution or were you studying strategy and business planning? We find it very interesting that what leaders are struggling with is not what they were educated in. Ram Sharan said that 70% of strategic failures are due to poor execution of leaders. It's rarely for lack of smarts or vision. There is one overwhelming reason why execution is as difficult as it is. Within every organization, there is a clash or a rub between two forces. The one is what we call the whirlwind or the day job. This is all the work, energy, and attention that's needed to keep the organization running today. This is what keeps the doors open. This maintains the operation. It's what people will often refer to as the real work. The other force is the goals for moving the organization forward. These two things are not the same. They're both absolutely necessary, and they do not get along. Ask yourself this question. Would the people in my organization still be busy even if we didn't have any goals for moving the organization forward? Think about the strategies, the initiatives, the priorities that you've seen die. What killed them? Was it incompetence? Was it defiance? In the vast majority of the cases, what we see is that they are choked or starved by the whirlwind, by the urgency of the day-to-day. -day. In the vast majority of the cases, people are not stupid and they're not lazy. They're busy. The primary characteristic of the whirlwind is urgency. It acts on you. The goals for moving the organization forward are important, but they will never have the same sense of immediacy or urgency as the whirlwind does. You have to act on them. When urgency and importance clash, urgency wins. Here's the bottom line. The challenge with execution is not simply executing on a goal. It's executing on a goal in the midst of the whirlwind. The four disciplines of execution exist solely for the purpose of helping an organization execute on its goals in the midst of that whirlwind. Even though these disciplines are logical and straightforward, they are not easy to implement or maintain in an organizational setting. They say easy, they do hard. And whether you're running a very simple organization or an extremely complex one, the good news is they always work. The first of these disciplines is to focus on the wildly important. <laughs>
can be different from their parent wigs, but must ensure the success of the parent. It's not enough for the subwig to just support or align to the parent wigs. The sum total of the subwigs or battles must ensure the success of the parent wig or the war. And third, a wig must have a clear finish line, a single measure of success in the form of from X to Y by when. Too often, goals are defined in general terms with a variety of measures that merely dilute accountability and clarity. In the 1950s, our struggling space program had the goal of leading the world in space exploration. And that was a fine goal, and there were lots of measures associated with it, but there was very little focus, clarity, or accountability. In 61, Kennedy said something a little different. He said, we put a man on the moon by the end of the decade and return him safely home. When he stated that from X to Y by when, he created a line in the sand. Accountability went up, and interestingly enough, so did morale. With every organization that we work with, when they move from a half a dozen or a dozen of these we kind of ought to's to one or two, no matter what, there is a tangible change in morale. The second discipline is to act on the lead measure. <laughs>
That's the difficult part. It needs to feel at least a little like a game. Now, to do that well, there are four rules for creating a compelling scoreboard. First, simple. Think about how many football statistics there are and how many are actually on the scoreboard itself. This is about creating a player's scoreboard, not a coach's scoreboard. Second, it has to be visible to the players. Third, it has to show both the lead and the lag measures. I have to see that I can affect the score, that's the lead part, and that it's making a real difference, that's the lag part. And finally, and most importantly, you can tell immediately if you are winning or losing. One of our clients, a manufacturing company operating in North Carolina in a town where the average educational level is only seventh grade, is very interesting to us because every employee in that plant can tell you every single day whether they are winning or losing on their top priorities. This is fascinating to us because most executives can't provide you with that information. By the way, that same plant is also producing twice the profits with less people than all of its other sister plants. We also believe that the single biggest contributor to employee morale is whether or not a person feels that they are winning at work. Just go back in your own life and think about the time when you were most engaged and most excited about what you were doing and see if at that time you didn't feel like you were winning. Disciplines one, two, and three creates a winnable game for a person. Not just a game, but a winnable game but we haven't executed anything at this point. Discipline four, create a cadence of accountability, is where the real execution takes place. This discipline revolves around a 20 minute meeting that happens every week for every team that owns a wildly important goal and happens at the same time each week. In this meeting, you do not discuss the whirlwind, even if the building is on fire, and every person on the team shows up thinking about the very same critical question. What are the one to three things that I can do this week in order to impact the scoreboard? In this 15 to 20 minute wig session, each person takes just about a minute to review three things. First, I report on last week's commitments. Did I do what I said I was going to do? Second, I review the scoreboard. Is the lead measure moving? And if so, is the lag measure responding? And finally, third, based on what that scoreboard is telling me, what am I going to do in this next upcoming week to impact those lead measures? As you look at this week of time, you can see the yellow blocks are those objectives where we're trying to have an impact on the lead measure. And the blue, as you can guess, that's the whirlwind. Now, if you were to remove those yellow blocks, you can see, and you know from experience, it will not stay white. It'll turn blue, and it'll turn blue fast. The four disciplines is literally a process for driving the yellow into the blue. Folks, this is what execution looks like. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. One of our clients from a Fortune 50 company put it in a real interesting way. She said, we don't have dragons swooping down, knocking us off our priorities. What we have are gnats, right? Every day with the gnats in our eyes, and we look back over six months, and we haven't done any of the things we said we were going to do. The fourth discipline is gnat repellent. Let's take an example and walk it all the way through. Let's say that Bob is the manager over a number of crews in a construction company where the wildly important goal is safety. And in his slice of this meeting, he's going to do those three things. First, he's going to report on the commitments he made last week that he made. He either did them or he didn't do them. Second, he's going to look at the scoreboard. Now, this is the critical piece. On the scoreboard are both the lag measure, the wildly important goal, which in this case is the incident report, and it's not moving at all. It's being stubborn, let's say, and the lead measure which the organization has said is compliance to eight safety standards. Now he looks at the lead measure and what it tells him is that crews 9, 11, and 13 are not wearing their protective eyewear when they use the saws. Number three, 
He makes the commitments for this week, and of course, based on the scoreboard, he commits to talk to the foreman of crews 9, 11, and 13. Make sure they've got the eyewear and let them know it's not optional to use them. Now, here's what Bob is betting. Bob is betting that those activities will have an impact on the lead measure. It's a pretty good bet. The company, as a whole, is betting that the lead measure of compliance to the eight safety standards will drive the lag measure of incident rate. And that turned out to be a very good bet. From this example, you can see how critical it is that the lead measure be both influenceable and predictive. A lot of organizations use the four disciplines of execution as a sort of sane alternative to their annual strategic planning processes or as a way to just simply implement their existing strategic plans. And you can see from this example that no matter how detailed a strategic plan might be, and we've seen some very detailed ones, that no strategic plan is going to tell Bob that on week 27 he needs to talk to crews 9, 11, and 13. The adage with the strategic plan is similar to that of the, the general's adage that you throw out the war plan after the first shot's been fired. The planning that happens with the four disciplines happens every week. It's just in time planning and it's planning that's responsive to what the lead measure is telling you. The four disciplines of execution, in short, does three things for every team. First, it provides simple, direct clarity around the strategic priority. It separates the wildly important goal from the whirlwind and creates very clear line of sight around how we're gonna influence the wildly important goal. The second thing that it does is it engages every member of the team in a winnable game. And the final thing, and most importantly, it allows an organization to achieve its wildly important goals in the midst of a whirlwind.